so happy you're here and I am super duper excited because today we're going to make gluten-free and dairy-free French baguettes. I think French bread is the, my most favorite bread that I missed when I went gluten-free. I used to, before going gluten-free, go to the local grocery store at four o'clock once, maybe twice a week when they put out their hot French bread. I'd buy a loaf, and many times I have to admit I did not make it home before I dug into it. It was one of my most favorite things. And I have another favorite thing I love to do with hot French bread, and I'm gonna show you at the end of the video. I'm actually gonna reveal my dirty little French bread secret. Anyway, so we are gonna make French bread today, and the pan that we are going to use is this wonderful baguette pan that you can get from Amazon. I'll put the link below. And you're gonna, we're gonna make about, uh, it's about an eight or nine inch baguette. This one is nice and warm and smells so amazing. And then when you break into it, oh, ooh, look at the steam. Look at that texture. It's going to be crunchy on the outside once you toast it and nice and chewy on the inside. It's gonna have this fabulous chew I don't think you've ever had in another gluten-free French baguette. That's why I worked so hard on this recipe all summer. The recipe wasn't where I wanted it to be and I worked, I can't even tell you how many baguettes I made. I don't know, 24, 30, 36, something like that. But this, I think I'm there, I'm so excited. So I'm gonna move this pan out of the way and we are gonna get started. So we have a dry component and we have a wet component. If you've seen some of our other videos like the pizza crust or the hamburger buns, hot dog buns, sandwich bread, kind of have the similar process. Get all the dry ingredients into the bowl and then we add the wet ingredients. So earlier I measured all the flours and the supplemental ingredients and they're in the bowl ready. And now I'm gonna raise my bowl. And the only other thing we need to do is to um, activate our yeast. So I have made some water with the soda stream. What I've done is I've carbonated 110 degree water. If you do not have a soda stream, no worry. You can just go buy club soda at the store, pour out the amount you need, in this case it's two cups, into the micro and put it in the microwave, heat it up to 110, and then you'll be at this step. So I'm gonna measure out two cups into my measuring cup. And I like to use a larger measuring cup so I have a lot of whisking area when I put the, the yeast in. So I've got the dry active yeast. I'm putting that in and whisking at the same time. And if it doesn't foam up like this, then you're, you might have a problem with your yeast or you forgot to carbonate your water. The carbonation really makes it foam. So the other day I did that and I had to do it all over again. Okay, so my yeast is ready. And here I have the wet, which is um, sunflower oil, egg whites, and vinegar. Okay, I'm gonna turn on the mixer on the lowest setting just to kind of get the, all the dry ingredients mixed together. Now I kind of do this in a two, at the same time, but feel free to do them one at a time. But the goal here is that you're going to put the, add these wet ingredients a, a bit slowly, not like, like slow motion slow, but, but not like pour it all in either. So I'm gonna start adding. Sometimes I like to get some of the yeast out of here. Okay, we're all good. And now I'm gonna go up to two because it's all incorporated quite nicely. And now as I start to see how it's kind of um, clumping together on the paddle, I'm going up to three, then actually four. I'm gonna let this run at about a minute and a half at four, and then I'm going up to five for a minute and a half, so about a three minute total time of mixing. And then when it's done, we're gonna come back and we're gonna do our first proof. Okay, so about three minutes later, I have a wonderful bowl of dough. So you're gonna to wanna to notice if your dough has or has not risen up the side of the bowl as it's mixed. If it's risen up the side of the bowl, like I kind of moved up the side of the bowl and coated the side of the bowl, then you've done a good job, it's perfect, it's wonderful. If it hasn't, then it hasn't mixed enough because it'll, at one point your dough's gonna clump on your paddle and then as you get up to the higher speed and the more it mixes, it's just gonna kind of move up the side of the bowl, which is exactly what you want. So I've lowered my bowl, I'm gonna take my uh, paddle off. And so I have a bowl of hot water here because it's very sticky dough. And so I'm, I've got my hand wet, so I'm gonna pull off as much dough as I can from the paddle because I don't like to waste any dough whatsoever and get it back in the bowl. Now, you're probably asking, ooh, what does that feel like? 
Well, the best way I can describe it is it feels like, and I'll pull some up here, it feels like frosting, kind of a thick frosting. It's very, very smooth, not gritty at all. And it's, it's a bit heavy. You can tell it, it, it's not a batter and it's not a dough because of its, the moisture content is somewhere in between. So if it feels nice and silky and frosting light, then, you, then, you've, then you've nailed it, which is wonderful and perfect. Okay, so I've pulled my dough off of the mixer. I'm gonna take my spatula, dip it in the warm water because it's, I don't want it to stick too much. And I'm just gonna push down the dough on the sides of the bowl into the middle. Nothing fancy here, you're really just pushing down the dough. And not too much left on there, so that's good. And now I'm gonna cover the entire bowl with plastic wrap. And I'm gonna sit it on top of my oven, which I might've forgot to mention. Make sure you preheat your oven before you start this mixing process, because there's some heat that will come from your oven up to the top of the stove top. And we utilize that heat to rise the stove for the first time. We're gonna go through two proofs or two rises. This one on top of the stove in the bowl for 20 minutes. And then we come back, we're gonna form baguettes and then we're rising again. Then we're gonna bake them and then we're gonna eat them and it's going to be amazing. The dough has risen for 20 minutes, proofed risen, kind of the same interchangeable term. And I've got it here in the bowl. I'm gonna put it over here. I'm gonna talk about how we're gonna form these and I'm gonna scoop out the dough. So I've, I've taken a sheet of parchment. It's about the width of the pan. Um, you may not need it as big or you might want it smaller. So the more that you do these baguettes, you'll experiment and you'll find your own place. So the first thing I'm gonna do is spray the whole thing with a pan release spray. And now I'm going over to my scale and I'm spraying the bowl I'm scooping into as well as my scoop. So the goal here is 250 grams. I've played with lots of different amounts. 300 makes a really good baguette too. It's much, much bigger, but I'm gonna go with 250 because I'm gonna get about four, um, maybe five if I push it baguettes out of this batch. So I'm gonna start and scoop out my first 250. Okay. Okay. So I have about 250. You'll notice that the dough looks different than it did uh, before it proofs. It's going to have a lot more airiness to it. That's a very good sign. I pulled it out of the bowl. I'm kind of just moving around. I, I actually do like to play with the dough. So I'm going to put it down and start making kind of a, lo a log. I'm going to call it a log. That's You're going to go out, you know, I haven't measured this. I'm going to say that's probably about six or seven inches or so. And get some more water because I'm starting to stick. It doesn't have to be pretty because the next step is going to kind of make form it. So I've got it about, I don't know, about two, three inches away from my edge. I'm going to go a little bit further. So I'm going to roll this over and tuck this in and then roll my dough. And then I'm going to roll it some more. Sometimes you might need to dry your hands because it's got a lot of stuff on it. I'm going to kind of roll it like this, and that's going to form the baguette. There we go. I got my roll going now. Okay, and then I'm going to take it, put it on one of the forms in here, and roll it out very carefully. Now, I'm going to leave the, the parchment on here, so I want to make sure that I got about that much left. Okay, look at that. That's perfect. I'm kind of fixing the ends a little bit. There we go. I'm going to grab my scissors. And I'm going to cut this pretty close because you don't, you don't need a lot of this. Okay, and there we go. Let's get that part off of there. And we're good to go. Now that one's a little long. I'm going to push it in a little bit here. So, and you're, as you do this, you'll experiment and see how long you want to make them, how short you want to make them. So now I'm going to go get my next piece of paper. Scoop out another 250. I've got my next dough ball or log, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to put it down. I think I'm going to go a little bit shorter on this one. Okay, roll it over. Roll it. And it's got a really light touch to get this rolling action. 
I'm barely touching it and it might take a little practice. It took me a little practice. Okay, I think that guy's good. Put it in the second slot, roll it out. Oh, look at that, okay. That guy's really good. Now you could reuse these. I, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna I'm, I'm not going, no, you could. I'll let you choose that. I like to have a lot of space. So get my third one. Scoop out another 250. Yeah, like this guy's being honorary. He doesn't want to roll. I always say every dough ball has a mind of its own. It's its own personality and person. It's not a person, obviously, but they have a mind of their own. Okay, now we've come to an agreement and it rolled nicely. Oh yeah, that guy. That guy actually looks the best. He was the most ornery and um, I think he turned out really well. Now these are gonna be, these are gonna look artisan. They're not gonna be perfectly smooth. They're not gonna be perfectly shaped and that's perfectly okay because you want your bread to look like you actually made your bread rather than went to the store and bought it. Okay, so these guys look good. I'm gonna take them, put them on top of the oven. Now for the last one, I'm gonna get the spatula out because I'll never scoop all this up. Actually, I may have enough for a small one. A little bit more. Okay, there is just a little bit dough left. I may make a little mini one. Uh, we'll see. I don't like the waste dough. And if you can't get that rolling process, you could do this too. Roll it all the way up and then kind of roll it out. Roll it all the way up, roll it out. I think that will work just fine. Now I made this guy, cause I want to experiment. I made this guy a little bit shorter. And that's what's so great about making your own bread. You can do whatever you want. You're not, you know, it's not like, oh, it comes, the French bread from Udi's or Char comes in a 12 inch and I really want a six inch. So make your own, make your own size. I mean, you do what you want. I'm actually <laughs> going to reuse this for my little guy. Let's see how much I have left. Oh, okay. So I have a hundred, about 150. So I'm going to make this one really short, roll it up here. I think I'm going to do, let's see, I don't have as much dough to work with. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, he's so cute. Look how small he is. Okay, that's 150 grams. We'll see how he turns out. Okay, I'm going to cut this. I'm gonna put this on the stove with the other ones. They're both, they're both gonna rise for the rest of the 15 minutes and then we're gonna go in the oven. So the baguette's been sitting on top of the stove and they're second proof or second rise for about 15 minutes. So we have one more step before they get in the oven and we're gonna score the top so that the steam has somewhere to escape um, while cooking. So I've taken a very sharp knife. I've dipped it into some hot water because sticky dough. And I'm pushing down sort of hard <laughs> I know that's not very ha helpful. N not too deep, maybe maybe about that far or so. And I'm gonna dip it in the water every time I do one. This guy probably only needs maybe three. And I'm gonna probably do four or five in these. And you you can experiment, um, do your scoring, see how they turn out. You might wanna score less, score more. Okay, we are done scoring. 
we're gonna go in the oven. So we have two pans, so obviously we're gonna use two racks in the oven. These take about, for my oven, 16 minutes, but because we're going to flip them, open the oven halfway through, I'm gonna probably go for 18 minutes, so nine each side, because as soon as you open that oven, you're gonna lose a lot of heat. So I'm going in, I'm gonna put the, the one with three on the top shelf, or rack, I should say. And then this guy's going on the second rack. I'm gonna set the timer for eight minutes. And then when that goes off, I'm gonna flip them and cook them for another eight minutes. It's flip time. Oh, yeah, don't hit them on the rack above. Ooh, look at that. Oh yeah, these are looking good. Okay. That one's in. Okay, now I'm gonna set timer for eight more minutes. And then they should be done. Okay, they are done, I'm so excited. So I'm gonna pull them out and put them on top of the oven. Ooh, those look really good. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna take these over here. It's really important that we get them off of the pan as quick as possible. So I'm just pulling them off here, putting this back over there. Bring this over here. And they're a little warm, be careful, but they should be fine. This one is the best looking one out of all of them. Okay, I'm so excited, they smell. I wish you could smell how amazing this, they smell right now, it's so good. Oh. It smells like French bread, which is pretty darn wonderful and amazing when you're gluten-free. Okay, so all of them turned out pretty well. Like I said, they're not, they're not gonna look smooth on the top. They're gonna be more artisan. Um, you can choose to score to top or not. I think you're gonna have a good result um, either way. I'm gonna take this little guy who turned out really well and, and try him. Oh, look at that, look at that. Oh my goodness, look at that steam, look at that texture. I remember when I would grab the loaf from the grocery store and be driving home, I would like rip off the top because I like to get in the inside. That's the part I liked. It was all so gooey and delicious. Okay, I'm gonna try and see what it tastes like. Oh, to me, it tastes just like I remember that French bread. So in the beginning of the video, I said I'm gonna reveal my dirty little secret, which um, I don't know if I should be embarrassed by this or not. One of the things I absolutely used to love to do with my French bread is come home and dip it in ranch dressing. And so I have dairy-free ranch dressing that, that I make, it's my favorite recipe, and the link is up there, so here I go. It is the most, I mean, one could say it might be disgusting, ah. Uh -uh. But it's so good, oh my God. If you've never done this, I highly recommend it. Not the healthiest thing not the most high-end cuisine you're ever gonna have, but oh my God, it's so good. Okay, well, I gotta let you go now because I got a bun and I've got ranch and I've gotta finish this up. Thank you so much. Let me finish chewing. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait for you to make these yourself. Please let me know how they turned out in the comments or go to the website gfexplorers.com, leave me a message. I definitely wanna know how these work for you. The link to the full recipe for these is in the description below or go to gfexplorers.com. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do. We'd love to have you as part of our community. <clears throat> we release uh, new cooking videos every Wednesday and Sunday and you'll get notified about that. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And until next time, happy eating.